Sunday Painter. I want to introduce you to an artist you may have not heard of, Henriette Brown. In these short videos, we would take a quick look at an artist just to pique your curiosity to learn about a new art. Sophie de Buteller was born in Paris. Her father was an amateur musician and her mother an accomplished singer. Brown attained a privileged position in society because of her father, who descended from an old Breton family. Sophie's mother was widowed at a young age prior to becoming the Comtesse de Buteller, and for a time gave music lesson to support herself and her son from this previous marriage. For this reason, the Countess encouraged Sophie to pursue an education in the arts from a young age, in the event that she had the need to economically sustain herself. She insisted that Sophie study music and drawing, and she was homeschooled by the Countess and other tutors in their Paris home. Between 1851 and 1853, Sophie adopted the pseudonym Henriette Brown, the name of her maternal grandmother. In 1853, under her newly chosen pseudonym, Brown submitted her first work to the Paris Salon, where she exhibited regularly until 1878, the year before her husband's death. With this pseudonym, Brown sought to keep her professional and personal life separate. Furthermore, by distancing herself from her artistic career, Brown wished to preserve her social standing, as it was not deemed appropriate at the time for a lady to also be a professional artist. Brown's early work consisted of portraiture, domestic genre scenes, and French religieuse. Her capacity for realism was evident at the beginning of her career. Brown was a naturalistic artist, who had a reputation for painting from observable fact. She became known for her boldness with which she depicted genre scenes. Their scale, realism, and frontal figure presentation were unusual characteristics for the time. Many of her early genre scenes focused on the subjects of religion and or children. Her early works often contained themes of pathos and sentiment. There were three other key characteristics to her paintings. First, her paintings were often extremely large for genre scenes and her figures were placed toward the front of the picture. Second, certain aspects recalled elements of Dutch art from the 17th century. These aspects included her division of the receding plane and the centralization of light in her interiors. Lastly, her work contained realism. While her paintings were creations of her mind, all the elements and details were borrowed from real life. Brown's paintings had popular appeal. Her work fetched high prices and attracted influential patrons such as Emperor Napoleon III and Empress Eugenie in the 1850s. Her paintings were well received in Britain and France, although her genre scenes had greater importance in Britain and her Orientalist paintings held higher praise in France. Brown's works were celebrated as they broke with the male Orientalist tradition but were also uncontroversial in terms of style. The artist's reputation among critics as a serious artist was never under threat. Her later fame was more closely attributed to her Orientalist paintings. Brown's first Orientalist subjects exploded onto the French art scene in 1861. The two paintings called Interiors immediately received critical coverage. This was the first and last time she painted this type of scene. After these two paintings, she continued to produce Orientalist subjects of children, schools, scholars, and individuals of Oriental society. Her Orientalist paintings continued to be popular in France throughout her lifetime. The 19th century saw a dramatic increase in Orientalist fascination. Brown exhibited numerous Orientalist paintings in the 1860s, and during this period, enjoyed a time of travel and success. In 1862, she was one of three women listed as founder members of the Société Nationale des Beaux-Arts in Paris. Brown traveled to Turkey in 1860, Morocco in 1864, and Egypt and Syria. Because of her female gender, Brown was able to personally interact with the Eastern Harem and its inhabitants, witness the gender politics that governed the Harem, and depict the interaction among women in the Harem that other male artists could not. Representations of the Eastern harem by male artists were largely based on fantasy as men could not enter these womanly spaces, therefore their sexuality was exaggerated to conform to male fantasies. Her ability to visit a harem allowed her to paint harem scenes differently than men. She does not objectify the women, but rather presents a calm and controlled domestic space, excluded men from the scenes, and painted with a more subdued color palette. Hope you enjoyed this short documentary, for more subscribe to my channel, also don't forget the distressed artist tease, the link is in the description below. Have a great day and thanks for watching.